All right, hey, welcome back to Brighter Rays. We're looking at a study called Go Up and Be Separate. And we're looking at 2 Corinthians 6, 17 through 18. Now, today we're looking at our part of our study called What Separation Doesn't Mean. We already talked about the world, what world we're talking about, this, this present age of evil. Uh, this world is, is dark. This world is passing away. It's dying in the kingdom of God, the world of God is is living, it's growing, it's, you know, more and more people are coming into it, and um, there's parts of the world we can see that plainly, but, uh, and there are other parts where, like, uh, you know, the world is raging and it's causing problems, so, America would be one of those places, it doesn't mean we just like, well, it's, it's the end of the world, so we might as well just let it go, no, that's not true. The Bible never tells us just to sit back and let evil run its course. Uh, you'd be hard-pressed to find that. It's always saying, fight against evil, expose evil, do this, do that. It doesn't say, just sit back and wait for the end to come. It says, know what season you're in, but we're in this age right now, this evil age, and we got to go out and be separate from it. So, but what separation, what doesn't it mean? I mean it, let's look at the negative first before we look at what it actually does mean. So first of all, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't be working a normal job, right? <laughs> some people go, some people have done this in the past, and it's just like, well, it does. I, I can't work. I can't be in the marketplace. I can't do jobs. I can't have a job because, you know, it's evil. No, you, you can work. You can work in a normal job, right? I get the, uh, there's, there's the idea of the parallel economy and, um, you know, creating jobs for Christians and having Christian-owned businesses and stuff like that, competing against uh, worldly businesses, and that's good, that's fine. doesn't mean you can't have a job and that you shouldn't participate, that you shouldn't compete against. You know, I'm all for this idea of a parallel economy if it's in competition, if it is going against um, the world. And you're willing to participate in that. I mean, you can, what better way to expose the darkness than to create a business that's based on biblical principles and then competing well in the marketplace? You know, take their business. If you want to see that change, steal their business from them by doing the best and doing it biblically. Uh, that's good. But, so you're supposed to work, right? Second, uh, Thessalonians 3.10 says, For even when we were with you, we would give you this command. If anyone is not willing to work, let him not eat. So Paul says, in this world, in the time that we're in, we're, we're to go out and be separate, but we still have to work. It doesn't mean you get to just sit around and hang out for the end to come. You know, it's just not... You, you don't get to sit around and just let everyone give everything to you. Or think that the world's gonna, you know, serve you in that way. It doesn't. Um, uh, so the idea is not to be a victim. The idea is not to be uh, lazy. It's to, you know, be willing. If anyone's not willing to work, now there, there's a difference between not willing and then not being able to. We're not talking about disabled people here. Those who need help. Uh, it's talking about who are not willing to work. Those are just lazy who are playing the victim card. Well, I can't do this because of X, Y, and Z. Well, you should still be willing to work. And he says, if they don't want to work, then let them, you know, don't let them eat then. Don't keep, you know, handing them out. So, so going out and being separate doesn't mean you just give up on working. You know, get a normal job. If you have to work for a boss who's a sinner and is evil, that's what you gotta do. But you don't be sinner or evil. Uh, if it if you have to choose between your job and violating the laws of God, then you have to get rid of the job, unfortunately. But you have to be looking for another one or creating a job. But you have to work. Uh, number two, it doesn't mean that you don't have any unbelieving friends. You don't associate with unbelievers. Uh, you know, we're actually told the opposite of that in, in the Bible, that you... Uh, and Paul says, I didn't say that you shouldn't associate with them. <laughs> I'm saying that you can't be unequally yoked with them. It's kind of in the same passage that we've been talking about. It doesn't mean you can't give up, you know, you should give up on, on these people, uh, and then you remove yourself from them. Unfortunately, in the past, you know, with the whole monks and nuns and the monastic movement, you know, that was uh, the problem. 
you know, you all being separate, but it doesn't mean you avoid them all together. Um, how are you going to witness to them? How are you going to meet other unbelievers? How are you going to how are you going to meet those people if you don't spend time with them? So obviously that's not what we're talking about. Yes, you associate with them. You can sit down like Jesus did and have a meal with them and talk with them. You can do business with them. Um, <clears throat> you don't yoke yourself to them, like it says in the passage. But yeah, you can you can have unbelieving friends. It's okay as long as they're not influencing you. As long as you haven't yoked yourself to them, like you know, this is my best friend. Is this unbeliever? That's where we run into problems because. We really should have brothers and sisters as our best friends. Uh, number three, separation doesn't mean that you're only concern yourself with you only concern yourself with religion. That's it. <clears throat> you forget everything else. Uh, you're not concerned about anything else that's going on around you in the world. You're just concerned about your own personal sanctification. Now you've probably met people that are like this, right? They're all about you know spirituality. They're all about uh, their Christianity. They're all about themselves being separate from the world doesn't mean you just write the world off being you know being separate doesn't mean <laughs> you just say well they're the world and they're just gonna go to hell in a handbasket so we'll just let them you know and just giving up on the world and you see so many people do this and it's just like well that's the world yeah but you're called to love your enemies how is this writing them off and dismissing them loving your enemies you see them making horrible laws and doing horrible things, and you're just like, meh. You know, you know that they're heaping condemnation on themselves. Why are you okay with them doing that? Do you truly love them then? If you're willing to, if you're like, well, that's just what the world does. So, no, that's not loving. You're hating them. Um, love your enemies. Uh, that's that's not you know our concern too. You know. When God was telling the, the Israelites to go out and be separate, he wasn't like, well, you know, that means that that contradicts. Uh, yeah, I understand that contradicts my my command for you to be light into the nations. But, you know, because they were supposed to go out and be a light to the nations, sharing their religion, sharing their laws, you know, that the laws of God would be uh, um, they would be amazed by the laws of God and how how their culture worked. That was the idea. Um. Yeah, so they weren't supposed to only concern themselves with their religious practices or themselves, really, because then it becomes very selfish. But the idea is that, you know, we should be sharing. Uh, the Great Commission, right, is to go <clears throat> and make disciples of all nations. How do you do that if you're only concerned yourself with your own Christianity? It's not going to happen. Uh, you need to go out and meet unbelieving people. You need to go out and share more than just uh, your religion with them. Because if you're just talking about, well, it's just, if you're just going to share your religious practices or beliefs with them, does your religion impact everything you do? Does it impact the way you vote in your politics? Does it impact your ethics? And when it comes to medical, technology, all those kinds of areas, does your Christianity do that? I mean, the problem may be that doesn't, and that's, that's the first problem. But it, it should impact every area of your life. And if it does, then you can't just concern yourself with religion. Do, going out and being separate doesn't mean that you just, well, I'm over here in my church, and I don't have to worry about anybody else. No. <clears throat> you do. <laughs> you should. You should be all about exposing evil, as the Bible says. All right, so number uh, four is you should dress or behave in a way that is weird or abnormal to the culture. Now, that's what some people think that separating and going out means, that you have to dress weird, uh, you have to act weird, uh, it's just abnormal. You have to be abnormal in order to go out and be separate. Now, some things, you know, the, how are we different? What is the differentiation between the world and um, and the church, the world and God's people? What has always been the difference between the world and the church, even back in you know Abraham's time it wasn't like oh wow look at this guy he's he's wearing some weird clothes he's wearing clothes that we used to wear you know 200 years ago he must be a believer in God is that you know it doesn't make any sense no it talks about uh, because that that actually has the opposite effect uh, you look at um, Matthew 23 where Jesus is talking about the Pharisees he says they do all their deeds to be seen by others for they make their phylacteries broad and their fringes long and so 
they dressed and acted in a way that would draw attention to themselves because of the way they're acting and the way they're dressing. Not because they were not sinning. Not because what they're doing, what their whole lives were glorifying God. It was just because they were trying to act weird, act abnormal. Um, you, you've seen Christians do this, and you're like, why? Why are you doing that? Well, I'm trying to show that I love God. Uh, yeah, but you're drawing attention to yourself, not to God, though. You're just making a spectacle of yourself. So we got to be careful with that. Because there, there can be a fine line in there sometimes. Because if you're just going to make a spectacle of yourself, then all the attention's on you. But the idea was, and the idea that Jesus was pointing out, was that they're making their phylacteries broad, and their fringes long, and they love the place of honor at feasts and the best seats in the synagogues and greetings in the marketplace and being called rabbi by others. And he says, you don't have to be called rabbi, for you have one teacher, and you're all brothers. Call them no man your father on earth, for you have one father who is in heaven. Neither be called instructor, for you have one instructor, the Christ. The greatest among you shall be your servant. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. And there's the key phrase. Humble yourself. So if you're dressing humbly, if you're not ostentatiously and not weird, not just, you know... There's one thing about being counterculture. There's another thing about just, just being obnoxious. You know, and we kind of take that, oh, I shouldn't be innocuous, I should be a jerk. No. He's saying, don't do the stuff that's going to draw attention to yourself. It should be pointed to God. The easy way to do that is just to dress abnormal. Now, I don't have a problem with wearing a t-shirt with a Christian message or something else like that, you know, uh, because you're pointing to God then, not to yourself. But if you're going out dressing all crazy and stuff, why are you dressing like that? Well, that's just who I am. Are you trying to draw attention to yourself? No. Well, that's what you're doing, though. Well, that's not my intention. Well, again, your intention, then, is what? To ignore the fact that you're drawing attention to yourself? <laughs> and ignoring the fact that it's, yet you're doing that doesn't make it the fact that you're still doing it. Whether your intention is right or not, you've been called out, and now you need to change. But that's a whole other story. <clears throat> but the idea is that, you know, as, as believers, you shouldn't look at the house, uh, you know, believer and be like, wow, that person is really religious. No, it should be like, wow, that person serves the Lord. They truly believe in God. They're serving God. That should be the thought, not like, oh, I hate those Christians over there because, you know, they got 30 crosses in their front yard. Like, okay, put one out there. You know, at Christmas time, put Jesus out there. But do you have to have, you know, it's not about being annoying and obnoxious. It's about truly sharing the gospel of Christ. They're, they're, they're two different things. All right, enough of that. Uh, number, what am I on, five? You should, you know, sometimes people in the past, definitely in the past, and even today, some people believe that the separation means that you should be a hermit, you know, that you need to isolate yourself from the world that you need to go out from the world and this com that means you don't have anything to do with it anymore and the classic passage that would go against that is in Jesus high priestly prayer in John 17 where he says in verse 15 I do not ask that you take them out of the world but that you keep them from the evil one they're not the world as I am the world sanctify them in the truth the word is truth as you sent me into the world so I sent them into the world so he said, I'm sending you guys, I'm not taking you out of the world, I'm sending you out into the world, amongst this world, amongst these dark people. But he says, but then clean them while they're out there, sanctify them, set them apart in the truth. So that's the difference there. Not being a hermit, but being set apart while you're there, in the world, but not of the world, right? Separated from the world in that way, but not in it. Uh, but it's still in it not being separated so you don't have to be a hermit and the last one you should only attend a perfect church right <clears throat> some people think this well, I gotta go out and be separate I have to find these people that are separated completely and they're completely perfect and it's not, that's not the idea you know Judas Iscariot walked with Christ Jesus was okay with having the one who betrayed with him walking with him the whole time so that's gonna happen in the church the wheat and the tares idea right the tares are in the church one day they'll be weeded out you know, we can work to to lessen that, to minimize that, but we'll never be wholly, per, per, you know, perfect at that. So, so let's stop there. That's what separation doesn't mean. Next time we'll take a look at what separation does mean. Let's look at the positive side.